I bought this 1970 Plymouth satellite sight unseen with every intention of driving it home 250 miles. Now the story starts about a couple weeks ago. I'm scrolling through Facebook Marketplace, which is a dangerous place to be nonetheless, and I see this Plymouth that shows up for $1,500, had a price reduction recently. I thought, wow, that's something worth looking at. And of course, every 70 Plymouth, well, that's a friend of mine, and I can't let this one slip by. And it's funny that whenever you actually have friends who are looking out for cars, a lot of them sent this to me. I had five or six people send this exact listing to me because they're like, hey, that looks like a good deal. So of course I had to message the guy. Now these pictures do not tell the full story and I'll show you exactly why later on in the video, but it was still worth checking out. And being listed for six months, that was a little bit of a telltale sign that something might be odd, but I was still interested in finding out more. So I saw in the ad here that it had a misfire on cylinder number six. That's not really my main concern. What I'm really worried about is can it stop? Because I don't need to be driving a car that cannot stop. And doing brakes in somebody's driveway 250 miles away from home with basic hand tools and not having your full shop at your disposal is something I have done many times before, but it's really not my favorite thing to do. So I sent him a message here, said, are the brakes working? What's keeping it from running and driving besides the misfire? But he responded and said, some gas, a battery, air up the tires and drive her home. The brakes are working. That sounds good to me. I like the way this guy talks, so maybe that's just a dream come true, but we won't know until we get there and look at it. I didn't think to ask anything else. I was like, okay, all the things that I need to check off work according to this guy. So my first instinct is schedule a time to come pick it up. And I had zero reservations about rust or anything like that because of what I had planned to do with this car that we'll talk about at the very end of this video. So we saddled up, got my truck, loaded down with tools and parts and everything I thought we might need to make a 250 mile trip home. And we left early in the morning on Good Friday. We got there and we found the satellite sitting at the very front of the driveway. Guess what? It already had gas, it already had a battery and all the air in the tires that you could want. But the closer we looked, we discovered that there was a pretty serious fuel leak at the fuel filter, uh, the radiator was busted, and none of the brake lights worked. So that's where I started my attention first. Huh, okay, that was interesting. Might have to pull the wire out of the horn to make the brake lights work. Huh, that is odd. <laughs> uh, pull the wire out of the horn, I guess. I guess that's what I tied into was the horn uh, power wire. I thought it was the accessory. Hey, that's a good way of telling us that the, the, the tail lights work if the horn comes on. Yeah, it's triggering the horn relay. Okay, does it work now? Anything? No. Well, how about now? Driver's side. Driver's side. Oh, it's barely blinking on the passenger side. So it might have been flashing on the passenger side. I just might not can see it. So we only get brake lights on that side. It might be on that side, but if it is, it's dim. Yeah, the driver's side's a lot brighter than the passenger. Hmm. So it turned out that there was actually no power going to the brake light switch itself, but the switch was working. So I found a 12 volt source just in the dash somewhere, which unfortunately and accidentally turned out to be the horn power switch. So you saw us have to unplug the horns. On top of that, we had one brake light that worked. So what I ended up doing was after replacing every single bulb in the tail lights, I had to run a jumper wire from the left brake light to the right brake light. So now they both come on at the same time. There's a little bit of a leak right here. It's pretty slow, but it's enough that, you know, we're, we're seeing a problem. We got an egg here. We're gonna try the trick. I've seen it done before. I've never done it myself, but and if all else fails, we can do a little uh, marine weld on that. It's pretty slow, but again, it's, it's quick enough that it might be a problem. Yeah. See if that does anything. If not, we'll have scrambled eggs here in a couple minutes. I think it stopped. Look. I don't see it leaking anymore, do you? 
I see nothing coming out. I guess it works. <laughs> I've never done that before. I've watched Dad do that with pepper. I have seen him do that, and he, I don't remember if he did the egg, but he talked about the egg. That's, that is hilarious. Just getting it come back, but it's it's intermittent, you know. It's it's gotta let it's gotta cook. Just, just a little bit. Here's your shell back. <laughs> I guess not. That is that's wild. Who would have thought? I don't know. I mean this ain't he said it idles better than it runs, so, or dries at least, so we might be in for it, because all I've heard is it idle right here. I stuck it in gear going forward and backwards and that was it. That's good enough for me. But you said it dries. We just pulled up here and we had it running. So we may get down the road a ways. There's a gas station with a lot of room and a nice uh, paved area. We'll go check through everything. We checked the brake fluid at least. So that's a plus. The gas is full. So we're trying somewhere. Well, oh, it reversed. This is my first time driving it. <laughs> I didn't even, I bought the car without even checking it over. We got both brake lights. We've got, well, that's it. Okay. He said the number six cylinder likes to foul itself over time. I mean, it's driving. We've got one gear so far. Oh, look, wow, it shifts hard. That's pretty good. The floor is made of wood, so you'll probably hear a lot of noise coming out of the rear end. It's not breaking up under load. You would think so if it was fouling that bad. Did we get a third gear? Oh, I felt it. Yeah, we've got three gears, guys. Oh, and it shifts well. How about the brakes? Uh, there's a little to be left desired, but it stops. I'm gonna put my seatbelt on. We are literally out here in the middle of nowhere, Kentucky. I mean, this is some crazy, crazy back roads. We're coming up to our first stop sign. And guess what, folks? It stopped. <laughs> Nobody coming that way? Not to the floor. Oh. Very gassy smelling. I see a little bit of smoke coming out of the rear. Oh boy, pull the hill, pull the hill. Well, I'm still in second. There we go. I'm a little worried, the temp gauge hasn't moved. Uh, so I do wanna pull over at the next possible convenient spot. Uh, the alternator is all the way pegged is basically saying yeah the battery's dead and luckily points are really not that much to you keep going and we're not running any lights besides the brake lights when i do touch them but we got a backup battery but still i don't know i yeah that temp gauge is kind of concerning <laughs> hopefully the fine folks here don't mind if i just pull in right here and check over everything shut her off see if it boils over check the radiator uh. yeah it's leaking but I think it's slow enough to not be a problem well we're all right I mean I just wanted to pull over and check everything uh, the leak is persisting but it's really it's not fast enough that I would consider it to be a problem <laughs> is that egg or is it? stop leak combo mm. yeah uh it's full it's very frothy and it's not building up any pressure because it's all going out right there but we filled it up right before we left and i don't we have, i mean we haven't been driving for very long but it's probably been i don't know six seven miles yeah and it's still pretty much full i think we'll be all right I, i'm not too worried about it we should probably get out of here <laughs> 
So I reached around to see if I could find the seat belt and uh, all of them were unbolted in the back seat, but we're missing a good majority of the bolts. But I did find some. I'm gonna take the one out of the back here. I'm gonna take this seat belt. Tuck it in through the seat there. Now I feel safe. Her. Uh, I don't know how far I need to be going without a seat belt. That could have been bad. I'm gonna put a hole in the floor. That'll Tain me, right? Ooh, look how <laughs> dusty that is. All over my jacket, too. Uh. Oh. oh, man. Dang it. Okay, well, you know what? That's just how life is gonna have to be for the next few minutes or hours. We have a long way to go. Okay, well, that's better. Do I go that way? Where are we? That's a great question. Oh, we're gonna go up that road and then turn right. Okay, I got it. It's up here. Also, the blower motor is wide open. So maybe I'm okay. He stopped. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but okay. At least it's a beautiful drive out here. The speedometer is really steady. I don't know if it's accurate or not. I'm gonna check that here in a second, but it is just awesome scenery out here. Rolling hills, beautiful part of Kentucky. Grenade just a swinging my skull, doing things. I mean, he's cool. He's got glasses on. I mean, the speedometer says we're doing 50. I might try 55, but that's about as fast as I want to go. We're going to be doing back roads and nothing but the whole way back. He's looking good, folks. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Well, we pulled into our first stop at this gas station, and uh, a lot of wasps has come out of somewhere. I don't know if you can see him back there. So we're gonna let him uh, kind of relocate, maybe go grab some lunch real quick and go from there because I don't really intend on going much further with them in the car. Let me open the trunk real quick with the key. So here's our fuel jug situation. Uh, it works, it's something, but I want to be a little bit safer and have a little bit more range than five gallons. So we brought a jug, or actually a whole tank with us that we're gonna put in. There you can see my splice work. That's what I did to get both brake lights working. We got a bunch of screws we can work with too, so that's nice. We'll at least cut some material to get down to this wood floor because as you can see, it's wood. So I'm in under the dash trying to get brake lights to work and I hear, hey, the floor is wood from the owner and Briar. At first, I didn't think it was wood. And he said something about it like, oh my gosh. It's actually, yeah, it's wood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just used to them all being like, yeah, usually they're rotted out, but this is actually, I mean, this is basically a truck now. You guys said it was nice. <laughs> I almost did. So. It, is it nicer than having floors that are gone versus wooden floors? It's not half bad. It's good fabricating. I mean, really, let's look at that. Look, he measured stuff. Things look nice. We got little stops here that we can ratchet strap our tank to. It's, it's halfway, halfway okay. We got some kitty litter. I don't know what that's for, but we'll just ignore that. Uh -oh. oh, get out of there. Golly. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna get some pliers on that thing, golly. Oh, we got to remove that to make a nice flat ground for our new tank that we're going to put in here. 
still has gas in it from the last time. That's a good probably 10 gallon capacity versus our five that we had before. So we can at least go twice the mileage there. Oh, where did my screws go? I got two screws. No! There's a ton of screws just all on the floor of the trunk here. I've got these two here that I think will work. We do have a drill for things like this, don't we? Yeah, but who wants to do that? It's the car that keeps on giving. Provides you all the hardware you need. Okay, I need a drill. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's two. That's pretty solid, ain't it? We'll Enough. take a hose clamp to that. That is the pickup, right? Yes. <laughs> now we got a new tank. I'm going to go to the pump over there, fill it up, and then we've got that extra whatever that is. Perhaps in case things happen. I don't know. <laughs> what are we doing? Oh. He just spilled all his water out of his tank. Thought it might be a good idea to show you exactly what we've got going on here. Six cylinder, original. It originally had air, does not anymore. Uh, no power steering, no power brakes, two speed wiper, hardly any options at all. And uh, yeah, that's it. As a one barrel, he said it was a GM. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, the battery is, well, just don't look at that. And what I wanted to do was check the fluids real quick because I didn't even do that when we left. Oh, is that head gasket, you think? Yeah, that's a little bit of water in the oil. Surely is. So we've either got a crack in the cylinder wall or a uh, blown head gasket or both. Keep more oil in it. Yeah, we might add a quart just to be on the safe side. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? That's probably good enough. We're going to go. That's that is plenty far. We're just going to go ahead and top it off and drive. Pull the oil cap off. Get a little little uh, moisture in there. No big deal. Maybe adding just a quart of oil will fix and heal things. The oil light goes off at least. So, I mean, it's getting oil pressure. Anyway, we'll just you know what? Here, hide that from me. That way I can't see it anymore. The coolant doesn't look oily. I mean, it's got some bubbles in it, but I think it's just as good air in it. And there's a patch spot right there. But it is only leaking just a little bit. It doesn't look or smell oily, but it is compromised. <laughs> the whole thing's compromised. And close. We just got nine gallons. It is at capacity. We are going to drive now. We get as many miles as we can, get there before the sun goes down, and do our best. So far, so good. Uh, I can tell that that cylinder is kind of coming in and going. You get up to speed, it doesn't get as bad, but it is pretty fumey in here. Uh, it's really just going to be a matter of taking our time. We're not in a hurry. We're just going to do our thing, get this car home, uh, and hopefully don't blow the head gasket even more or put a bigger hole in the block. I'd really like to know what happened to this thing to where it's got coolant in the oil, but like I said, the oil light is off, so there's no lack of pressure. It's just that whatever is in there creating pressure isn't all oil, which isn't always great, but as long as it's off, right?
of it, the more I'm starting to hear some interesting noises. Uh, something in the front end is rattling. I don't know if it's a steering column or, or what, but pretty good noise over some pretty heavy bumps. I mean, the shocks are all right. The rear end doesn't make any howling sounds, but the wood in the back is what's making all of our rattling noises in the rear. But it's still going. Uh, we're probably only like, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes into our drive. So it's not very far, but it's far enough. I mean, heck, we're sitting as long as it has, and then just hopping in it, looking at it zero, and driving it, not too shabby. Well, we pulled over here at this uh, little church. Just wanted to look at it one more time. Uh, coolant is puking out of the grill, so that's okay. I'm gonna top it off one more time. Ugh. What is this? Is that where I, sp oh, I spilled that earlier? The radiator cap is not even hot. Oh, it's brown, but it's full still. Does that smell like oil? No, it smells like coolant. Oh, I killed a moth. Sorry, guys. I mean, it is briar. It stopped leaking. We're losing pressure somewhere else. I don't know where, but it's not losing pressure anymore out of that, that leak that we had. I don't, uh oh. We need to go. I didn't see a need for us to stay there any longer. So we got out. We're gonna go up to a gas station because when I turn the wheel, I don't know if you can hear it, but it sounds like a wheel bearing trying to give out. So I'm gonna pull over and check both the front wheel bearings to make sure we're not gonna lose a wheel. When I come up to a red light, I gotta put it in neutral. I'll show you why. When approaching gear, oh, see that? The oil light's trying to flicker and come on. We'll put it in neutral, so the oil pressure will stay up high enough. It's probably pretty thin. Well, we pulled over and I jacked the front end up, because I noticed that whenever I would turn slightly, the front end would kind of wobble, and it would shake the steering wheel. Sure enough, I don't know if you can hear that, but the wheel bearing is a little loose and the fronts can really be adjusted. That might help our pedal travel situation, but I'm gonna pop this cap off and see if I can tighten it up a little bit. It was a little loose. Yeah, there we go. No more noise back and forth. be the lower ball joint because there's one in the glove box a good bit of play in it but the wheel bearings are tight now i would tighten up the front brakes but i'm scared the adjusters are going to just fall out and they work enough we did 60 for quite a while and uh, we're just going to keep going now i'm feeling better now i just don't want any wheels to fall off for any reason if i can help that that's my goal well that didn't fix our vibration if anything it might have made it worse or it's just gotten worse if i hold the steering wheel just right it won't do it but it also could be a flat spot in the tire that's making issues like that and there's no telling but it's not causing any problems right now so we're just going to keep trying uh, we've probably done about 40 miles at this point and had to stop about four times so uh, stop per mile that's not too bad we're in some heavy traffic right now we're just going to be very careful and make sure we don't get too close to anybody or you know do anything that we shouldn't be doing and I, I don't plan on that and this thing is not going to be going faster than it can because well it can you know it just is what it is this little six cylinder she's hurt but she's not going to give up yet we're actually driving right past Fort Campbell in Kentucky uh, it's a military uh, installation here that is pretty cool I've actually got the tour uh, one time, I actually got to go on once to help a friend go get a Pontiac Fiero, and uh, the whole thing almost actually slung off the trailer. We went to uh, get this, and we loaded it on backwards because I don't know why. It was like a little tiny U-Haul trailer. We drove it on straight. I'm sorry. We forgot that the engine was in the back, so when we went to try and you know drive down the interstate, that sucker started slinging really hard. Probably one of the scariest moments of my life as far as like driving, and I did not enjoy that one bit. Fort Campbell. I'm not liking this traffic and neither is the car. 
I was at a stoplight, very first one in the line, and it shut off on me. Thankfully, it cranked right back up, and I was able to put it in gear, but I'm ready to get out of here. That's all I can say. This town is way too crowded. Oh, shoot. Oh. I'm having to drive with two feet now. Load it up in first gear. Keep the RPMs up. Oh, this is the longest red lights ever. Please. All right, we're good. Woo. I figured out that the heat was on, so I'm not as hot as I was. I was cooking in here. Ain't that the truth? Woo. Too much traffic, I'll tell you what. I'm ready. We have a turn up here in a half mile, and I think we're gonna get off this main highway. Oh, there's so many people out here. So many. That's the Cumberland River. What a beauty. Once we got through Fort Campbell, we drove through Clarksville. That's where all that traffic came from, and we have yet to get out of here. I feel like we've been driving in here for days. At least the river's pretty. Nice little scenic overlook, that's for sure. Man, that is so cool. Look at that. See if it's hot, we just pulled it in this gas station. No, no diesel in. I needed a break. That was, ooh, that was stressful. <laughs> I haven't been that far, but I just wanted to take a second and top off to see how we're doing fuel mileage wise and get an idea of how things are going. Because man, was that traffic just rough. I, I don't like stop and go traffic with a car that wants to die at every light. It's not fun, not fun at all. Well, we used, we're almost to four gallons. It's quite a bit. Oh, let's see. Uh, it's still got a little bit more to go. I'd say that's pretty close. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, I'll, let me just get right at five gallons. So we used five gallons so far. Not very good. It's still kind of, well, it's not really spewing out anymore, is it? No worse than it was. No. Is it leaking? No, no drips. I mean, that was there before. It's not, that's dry. That's a secondary latch right here. <clears throat> Radiator's dry, but it's still cool to the touch, ain't it? Yeah, it's warm. It's warm. No pressure. <laughs> She's a little steamy. Still, the coolant level is just fine. The egg trick worked. Who would have thought? Not, not I. <laughs> have you ever seen that before? I that... heard you talk about it all the time. <laughs> I learned that one from uh, Troy McCool himself. So there you go. You know what? That's got a pretty new filter on it. We're just going to say that's good enough, you know? Uh, the number six spark plug is the one that he said to keep going. Uh, every now and then, it'll catch wind. It's like, hey, here we go. Let's... Uh, burn off all that excess oil and pick up but it's just you know bad it's bad briar yeah that stop and go stuff was garbage i did not like that one bit but ah, it's still good everything is a-okay i think uh just we just can't like pull up to a stoplight or anything without like revving it up yes i did yeah actually i was I at that bridge i had it shut off on me i I had it in neutral and I was revving it up and I let off the brake and I pulled it down in gear too hard, like too quickly and it just died. Yeah, I dumped the clutch. It just died on me right there and I panicked. I thought, oh gosh, it's over. But I put it in park and it cranked right back up because I stuck it in reverse on accident and nothing happened when I turned the key. I was like, oh no, and I finally got it in park and it went back to, the, to cranking. So anyway, we're uh, gonna hit the road. We got a little less than uh, three hours left now still a long way to go still quite a long way to go but it's getting better i've got my gatorade for my electrolytes it's hot in that car yeah the heat was on the whole time i figured out that how to, yeah i was so hot i figured out how to turn the heat off but it works that's for sure uh, i did want to take a moment to show you this i don't know if you can see that but uh there's nothing there and this door hinge is just a little bolt holding it in that's why the whole door kind of you know does that motion but it's okay i think the temp gauge is trying to work it came up just a little bit off that line a second ago and then dropped back down you kind of see it's a little raised i think that it works but that's how cool the car is running because it can't build up pressure to build up temperature and it probably doesn't even have a thermostat i would bet it doesn't <laughs> so that's great it's for what we're 
doing? That's perfect. just about put you to sleep and I'm hoping it's not like carbon monoxide or anything but just hot tired <laughs> just, I mean it's just been a drive I mean you're really fighting this thing because it wants to go to the left but you're having to steer it back right to keep it from doing that while constantly trying to find a perfect middle so the steering wheel doesn't vibrate and just be on the lookout of everybody around you speeding up for hills because this thing does not have any power like we're about to go up a hill right now I'm gonna have to get all the power I can get and it's only 30 miles per hour through here I don't know what they expect me to do like I'm blocking traffic I have to pull over twice <laughs> shift when I hit 40. If I keep going, I'm all right. Come on. Come on. Almost there. Almost there. We didn't touch 40 yet. Oh, we crested it. Oh, man. Going from 30 to 55 uphill? No, not a chance. We're just a little bit over 100 miles left in the journey. Hopefully we just make it before the sun goes down. That's my main goal. I just want to get home before the sun goes down. Because when we took the Polara home the last time we did a car like this, we didn't get home till midnight. I was beat after that one. When you walk up on it, you're like, oh man, that's pretty cool. Look at that 70, oh, it's a four door, darn. Well, it's not leaking anything, surprisingly. Uh, it was starting to idle a little rough when we pulled in here and uh, the oil light was coming on again just because it was trying to shut off, but oh well. Uh, the rockers are still attached. The quarter panels, are, you know, they're, they're still there. Really just need a good front clip. I need fenders. All that good stuff. A good hood. You know, all these body parts, man, that's just good stuff to have. We are sub 100. Like 90, what, six miles left now, Briar? ish in between there and here pretty good uh we're doing all right i'm just tired <laughs> just I, I think i need a nap now but hey 70 satellite coming home with us for the first time in ever we've never had a 70 satellite four door this car exactly so hey i don't know what i'm talking about man i'm really not here right now are you here are you real i don't even know mm, it's bad it's worse than we thought well look at the under the hood one more time Yep, still there. Whew, that's a little hot this time. I'm gonna burn myself. Nope. <laughs> Zero pressure. Still totally full. Okay, well, yes, we're, there's a new liquid emerging here. What is that? I don't know. It smells like gas. Huh. Well, that's uh, interesting. Have we developed a fuel leak? I don't know this one. That's not from earlier when it was spewing gas out everywhere, was it? We just now noticed it? I mean, it's probably coming out of this, I would assume. Has that gotten worse? Just slightly. It's not as like white and like the frothy uh, blown head gasket Melted look anymore. Off, probably. Yeah, it's just more like blow by and sadness. We've got a leak there, a foreign substance there, a leak back there. That's fine. Only three. Three's not bad, is it? No. Yeah. Could be nine. 
it, it could definitely be nine. Hey, we fixed one though. That's all that matters. The most important one, we fixed that one and it hasn't leaked any more since then. Let's see how it cranks back after sitting here. Hot restart. Not very good. Uh-oh. She's back. When I fired it up and left, the brakes all of a sudden work great now. Like they were going to the floor before and now it actually, wow. Okay, well, I guess we unstuck a wheel cylinder or something. I don't know. Well, I was wrong. Uh, the brakes have always been that good. I don't know why I just thought that it was randomly better. And uh, you can always tell when this car is actually running on all six cylinders because well, one, it smooths out and two, a cloud of smoke comes out of the exhaust and it went away. So it immediately fouled itself right back again. So I was like, well, this thing's got some pep to it now. And I look back and it's just burning oil like crazy. And you just see a cloud of smoke. So we're back to normal. We're back down to five cylinders, back to its usual. So, you know, it was short lived, but I enjoyed it while it lasted. got some serious problems it shut off on me at a stoplight and it wouldn't crank back for nothing I finally I mean I just spun 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 it finally caught and every stop we do pulling away from it even in gear with rpm the oil light comes on until I hit like mid of the rpm in second gear so uh, we're losing oil pressure pretty bad I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go to the O'Reilly here and uh, change the oil real fast just to be safe on the way home because uh, we've got like 60 miles left and I really don't want to get stranded this close to home. We'll just roll in there, get us an oil change and then be on our way, hopefully. Well, we've been uh, in better predicaments than this one. You know, losing oil pressure when you don't change the oil is, you know, probably better than if you do change the oil and lose oil pressure. So at least we have a potential solution. I'm gonna put my gloves on because I know that sucker's gonna be hot. What if nothing comes out? <laughs> I probably did burn it all. It doesn't help that the uh, drain plug is cross-threaded either. It's probably dripping it all out. Oh, there it comes. That's straight water. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's bad. That's, that is liquid. That's not just, no, that's bad. All right, that's literally water, black water. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh. No thickness. None. And that's it. There, that's all of it. <laughs> two quarts. Probably two quarts. Wow. And we're on an incline too, so it's really draining it out. I got it out though, it's loose, and it's straight water. I kid you not, the drain pan weighs just as much when I put it under the car as all the fluids and oil out of this thing. It's not good. I, it, you really cannot tell a difference in how much oil is in the pan now. So it makes sense why it was running low on oil. Uh, get you out of there. Look at that. Baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
smells terrible. I don't know if it's ever been changed this century, to be honest with you. And I know I should have changed it before we left, but I mean, when you see what I'm using this car for, you'll you'll understand why. And we knew that the engine was bad anyway, because it keeps it keeps fouling number six spark plug constantly. All right, there we go. Drain plugs on, filters on. I got the finest 2050 that you can buy, because I don't want this thing ever having an oil pressure issue. Uh, so we're gonna get a peel. Ooh, that's hot. Wow. Probably gonna blow like, all the seals and everything out of it with 2050. <laughs> if it was, if it had oil pressure or enough to keep the light off with straight water, 2050 is really gonna do it. I noticed I could hear the one of the rocker arms starting to make a rattle, and I just ignored it because that's kind of typical Mopar. But maybe it was trying to tell me something. Now that I think about it, and of course. The finest of oil treatments, a little STP. Yeah. Does it taste like honey? Because it looks like it. Give it, a, give it a, give it a lick. No, dang it! It's gonna grow two extra cylinders now because it's that much better. It might even be a big block. I don't know. It might, <laughs> it might turn into a Hemi or something. <laughs> Somebody in the comments is gonna talk about how this thing had a bigger bore and stroke or something than a Hemi or whatever. Huge shout out to uh, store 1328 O'Reilly for being so kind and helping us out. They loaned me funnels, uh, drain pans, so I didn't have to buy all that stuff, rags, you name it. They're really kind, really helpful. So thank you store 1328. Let's see if this thing will crank now and run with oil pressure. Oh, needs a key, doesn't it? That helps. It was running when the key was cranking, but it would shut off immediately as soon as you let off. Ballast. I guess I unplugged it when I pulled the filter. Now, it'll run. No oil light. We're back in business. Funny what happens when you put oil in a car. It has oil pressure. Weird. Gas stop number two right, or three from the start and then the second fill up since then. So we've used five gallons since we left. I'm curious to see how much we're at right now. I mean, I would probably assume close to the same thing. I mean, it doesn't do great for fuel mileage, does it? But as long as it, well, I mean, you're running on five cylinders, you're already down, you've got a disadvantage. What are you gonna do? Well, a nice uneven five will round her out, and that should get us all the way home. Look at the rust. I just noticed that. You can see all through. Wow, that's probably some of the worst I've ever seen, to be honest with you, in that area. This is the final leg of the trip. We've got 56 miles, if I read it right, to get back home. Man, I don't know if we're going to get back before dark, but we're, I'm still hoping. I am still hoping. Go, 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 go! Five cylinders. Maybe even four. That's all you need. So maybe that was just like moisture or something that was in the oil that hasn't left yet. I don't know. Because it was showing that all up and down the, the dipstick. And I thought, yeah, something's wrong. But I guess that's just the nature of the game. But now we know that it's got oil in it now. Thank goodness. Which now that I think about it, doesn't really make sense because the dipstick, when we checked it at O'Reilly before we changed it, was completely showing over full. Like most of the, the dipstick was covered in oil. So that's kind of weird now that I think about it. But when we drained it, you know, if you have water in the oil, it should separate. Like it should mix together and no water came out. It was just so burnt up and disgusting and old that it couldn't do anything or function. So it makes me feel better at least the engine may not be as bad as we think. It could be a piston ring, it could be a valve seal, a valve is the one that shut all the way. So 
tell you what, it couldn't have been a more beautiful day. Good Friday, I tell you. It's good for more than one reason, but the most important reason being Jesus Christ giving himself for our sins. And I'm telling you what, it makes you really just stop and think for a second. We are approximately 20, 25 miles away from home. I can walk at this point. For all I care, I'll shove this car in a ditch and drive the rest of the way home. I mean, I'm, I'm beyond there. I, I'll call it already home at this point. Popping really bad. Who knows? Oh, I know there's cops. Are they blocking the road? Guys, I gotta go home. Okay, well, just don't stop me. That's all I care about. Well, we left at six o'clock this morning. It is currently six o'clock right now. So we go there, do all the work to the car, and almost get back. It has taken 12 hours, and then we're gonna be probably. 15 20 minutes from that point so a lot of drive and a lot of work today all i can say is that i am whooped to do all that in one day it's a lot of work but man is it rewarding and i'm very excited that we're almost home my foot is currently to the floor going up this hill we're losing speed we started at 60 now we're at 50. i have got it buried that's all she can do <laughs> If only we had one more cylinder, man, we'd really be set. Oh, don't make me downshift, we're so close. 45, come on, come on, come on, pick it up, pick it up, come on. Oh, we're going back the other way, here we go. Ah, we're back to 50, okay, Woo. Nice work. I think I'm windburnt or sun shaft, I don't know. Anyway, I can see my driveway. I am so beyond ready to get out of this dang car. <laughs> I cannot believe it made it home. This car, it's not good in the slightest, but it drove all the way from Kentucky back to my house. Oh, my sweet, sweet driveway. How nice it is to be back. Woo. It smells like gas. I'm tired, dirty, it's hot. I can lay over in this seat and fall asleep. But we made it home, ladies and gentlemen. Yes! Oh, well, it died as soon as I pulled in. Sweet. That's all you needed to do. Brought me back home. Oh! No wonder why it smells like gas and tried to flood itself. I guess the float stuck. Huh. Okay. Well, that's why there was gas all over this. Well, fire hazard, but okay. You know what? Oh, that's all the way over here. You, eh, let's just do this. Never mind, anybody. Never mind. You didn't see anything. Well, there you have it. We're home. That was a lot of effort, but we made it, and we made it in one piece. Now, remember me telling you about how I wasn't too worried about the rust. I'm gonna show you that in a second, but let's just dive into how rusty this thing is. But look at the frame rails. <laughs> They're gone. Rusty as all get out. You can see there's the wood, rusty frame rail. The front's not bad, but you know, this is, this is pretty rough. And not to mention the rest of the rust is covered in Bondo right there in the quarters. And then all this inside the car, it's, it's rough. Is very rough so the good thing is the car is useful for this 
You all should know this car. Quite a few years ago, Junkyard Digs and Thunderhead 289 got this car out running and driving after a very, very long time, and it is a beauty of a car, and it deserves to be put back on the road. Only problem is, is that it's way, way worse than the four-door we just drove home, so we're going to be able to use all the four-door stuff to make this car even better. That includes fixing the fender, because Kevin had a storm where this car was sitting, and it just beat up the original fender. So we have a good replacement, and we have a lot of trim, a lot of good pieces and parts that will go towards this car to make it go back on the road. But this isn't the only car. We've actually got something else that that four-door will go to. Let me show you. And here's the second reason, another 70 satellite. Now, Dad ended up actually buying this car after, again, Junkyard Digs and Thunderhead 289 helped me get it running and driving. This was way back, like, six years ago at this point. He bought it, and uh, it's been sitting right here ever since, but we plan to do a lot of work to it, and getting that four-door is going to help us do that exactly. So be on the lookout. This car is coming up first before the Black Satellite, but the Black Satellite will get its turn just like everything else. But now we have a lot of stuff that we can work with and make much better. It's awesome. You got to love it. That wasn't a jump in it and drive it home kind of car. Not really, but it did technically jump in and drive it home. <laughs> I mean, yes, it did need some work along the way, and there were some things that it probably would have helped to actually finish before we started the trip. I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna go at this guy's word and hope that he's right. And 99% of the stuff he said was correct. We just had to do little things on the side to make it better, including making sure it had oil. Who would have thought? But other than that, I had a great car. I think it was well bought for $1,500, and I'm very proud with what we got. So it's going to go towards some great stuff. We've got a lot of stuff, a lot of projects that we need to tackle because I want to make sure we have two good 70 Plymouth satellites at the end of the day. And the four-door is going to go towards making two very nice two-doors. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave a comment. T-shirts and stickers are down in the link below. Order anything because all that goes directly back into making vehicles like this in the background run and drive, put back on the road where they deserve. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.